coming out of the book of John again. Chapter 14, verses 5 through 12, the New International Version. Amen. Amen. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, and application of his word. Amen. Amen. If you can turn to your neighbor and help me introduce today's sermon title, Show and Tell. Show and Tell. Today there is something a little different I'd like to do, and to start out our sermonic moment, I'm going to ask my volunteers to come forth, and if you can maybe just stand up here, please. We're going to have some volunteer congregational participation. Amen? Amen. How many of you remember that time in elementary school when we used to do show and tell? I'm not sure if they still do it now. Amen? Uh, but I know we used to do show and tell where you would bring an object that was meaningful. Amen? and tell a little story about why this object was so special to you. There was a certain value you had to have towards that object, and it led you to pick it and bring it to school ever so carefully, and then share it before others. Inter interesting that today, if you Google show and tell, it'll point out that it's an educational tool. Show and tell is used to help develop public speaking skills. Show and tell can also be applied to teaching and coaching when using demonstrations during a lesson or practice. Amen? Amen. 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 And so we're going to have our show and tell today completely unrehearsed. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so help us, Jesus. It is truly unrehearsed. Um, each person will be sharing what is meaningful to them that they brought, um, and then we'll have them show their object to us. Amen? So who would like to go first? Sister Betty? That's okay. Do what, you, what the Lord leads you. Amen. Right here. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really appropriate that the voice cracked um, because coming up, I was uh, taunted a lot because of my voice. I was a little short thing and um, was told I had a voice like a frog. Mm -hmm. That was elementary school. And then to junior high school, boys can be very cruel. But then God blessed me, and I met a man. I met a man after being told no mm. by God of someone who I thought I was going to be with. That man gave me a ring. In this ring, you know, a ring is a circle. Mercy. Everlasting, connected. This ring is smooth, but it has some dips and grooves in it. Yes. Those dips and grooves are representative of our life. For 44 years, 
I don't tell him often enough, but when I look at this ring, I think about the love that he has demonstrated and shown me. There is no words that I could say that can describe the love I have for this man. Praise God. And I want to tell him this morning, and all of you, when I look at my ring, I look at my love. Amen. Richard, I love you. Amen. Show and tell. Show and tell. Amen. God bless you, Sister Betty. All right. Good morning, Emmanuel family. Good morning. Good morning. So, Betty, I was concerned that I was going to get up here and start crying, and you already took care of that for me, so I thank you. I thank you, I thank you. I'm good. I'm holding um, my dad's California ID card. Uh, many of you know that I was raised uh, a bit north of Chicago. Whoop, whoop, Chicago Bears, past there. And... Um, and so, uh, not only was I raised outside of Chicago, both of my parents were raised outside of Chicago. And so my dad, after my mom passed away, um, lived in our family home for about five or six years, um, and then he became very ill. Dad became ill, and my three sisters and I, for almost a year, took turns going back home to Chicago to enable dad to stay at home because he didn't want to leave his home. After about a year, we realized that was not going to happen. The Bible says that God has an appointed time for everything. Yes. And so dad did not want to leave the place where he was born and raised, where mom was born and raised, where our family home was, where my mom was buried, is buried. And so I had to put on my best daughter influencing skills with my dad to convince him to move to California to live with me. Um, those of you that remember my dad know that he was one of the kindest people that you would ever meet. I have one brother who's passed away and three sisters. My dad was the best girl dad you could ever ask for because he set the standard for how we should be treated as women. Amen, amen. My mom never um, pumped gas my whole life. I can never remember my mom pumping gas. I can remember my dad, my mom worked, uh, she was a nurse, and so she used to work the graveyard shift so that we didn't have to go to childcare. And my dad, every night that my mom left the house, would go and get the car. Those of you from Chicago know how chilly those winters can be. Dad would get the car out of the garage, warm it up for my mom. He took me on my first date to see Barry White and said, don't ever let anybody treat you less than this because you belong to me. So that's the kind of dad I had. And so dad, I said, you know dad, because he didn't think that he was as sick as he was. So I said, dad, and I'm not gonna preach your sermon. Amen. Miranda, you know? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We might do the benediction. Yeah. But anyway, um, my dad, I said to dad, he said, baby, I could say yes or I could say no. That was his kind way of saying no. He did not want to move to California. So I told him, I said, dad, why don't you come and visit me? And if you don't like it, I will come and live with you. And so we had that agreement. My dad came, being from Illinois, those of you that know Illinois, flat. My dad saw the beautiful mountains that God created. That was all it took. And so he lived with us for about seven years before he passed away. Um, the other thing I'll share about my dad is, and I shared something about him already, this smile, I know you all can't see it. My dad had the smile that would light up any room that he walked into. And so as a child and as an adult, when my dad would smile at me, oh my goodness. It lit up my life and my world. 
And so I have this, not because I'm sad. Again, the Bible says that God has an appointed time. I know Dad's supposed to be in heaven right now, but I have this so that whenever I want to see that beautiful face and that beautiful smile, I just whip it out of my wallet, and there's my dad. Amen. Amen. And we have a young person, and we were supposed to have Jaden pastor. Okay, we're not going to have, okay. We have a young person that's going to do it also for us, our show and tell. Uh, we'll help her. So for, for the, those of you who know Eden, she never stopped talking. I don't know who she got that from. but uh, so, <laughs> so she said that she may not want to do it, so we'll test it. If she doesn't, uh, Devon and I brought something that we can speak to very briefly. So we'll try her uh, and see what happens. So Eden, do you want to share what you have? Just as a little helper, um, we have a little teddy bear. What's a teddy bear's name? Charles. And who gave Charles to us? The horse. Okay. All right. So this is Charles, um, and he has a little blue ribbon around him that says, God save the king, uh, because Mike had the opportunity to go to London during the king's coronation, and he brought Charles back for Eden. And so when we asked her to find something that she values, she said she values her teddy bear because her father brought it from London for her. Amen, amen, thank you, thank you. And just to keep with the theme for fathers, um, hopefully you guys won't mind, this is very personal for me, and my husband actually thinks it's a little strange, but I'm gonna share it with you all anyway. Um, so my father passed in November of 2015, and he was cremated. And so I had this necklace and this bangle created in their cremation pieces. Um, so he's always with me. Mercy God. And I have a little message that was inscribed that says forever in my heart on the bangle. And so it's obvious why they're important to me. Um, again, he just thinks it's weird. But Emmanuel, if you wouldn't mind helping me out, if anything ever happens to me, I've asked to be cremated and I want you to make sure that Mr. Hinton has a piece of jewelry, okay? <laughs> With me in it. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Let's do the benediction. No, I'm just playing. I told you it was unrehearsed, but see how God provides. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to propose that our volunteers have shared with us today in their show and tell their object brought forth, that brought forth so many memories. Their, their story brought forth such deep heartfelt meaning, amen? And that was first because they saw the value in their object, whether it's a bangle or a, um, an ID card, a ring that is seen every day. They attached a meaning, they attached a power to this item and so that when they see it, it brings up these certain feelings. It moves these certain memories. Their item helped them to feel the love that they shared and the fun that they shared and the significance of that attachment, amen, that till death do us part, we will still wear a bangle, amen. God bless you, my sister, for, for doing that. Um, and this, they cherished this item, amen, and they were willing to share it. They mustered up the courage, so thank you again. And they felt proud enough, even the baby girl, uh, to bring her teddy bear, amen. Their item was worthy of this show and tell moment. When we come to find Jesus and the disciples in this place, now in this gospel according to John in chapter 14, Jesus has been showing his disciples and those around him as he traveled throughout this Judean countryside all his healing power, all his preaching wisdom, and his saving power. But as they saw Jesus performing these miracles, I would like to ask, did they really see him? As they saw Jesus rebuke the Pharisees and escape from their desire to kill Jesus, did they really see him? I know that old adage is saying is believing, I'm sorry, is seeing is believing, but I would like to propose that Jesus had been revealing himself to these disciples and those throughout this Judean region, but their seeing did not mean they were believing. It did not seem like they were seeing the worthiness of Jesus. Even after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead so that the people would see the glory of God, 
and believed that Jesus was sent by God, some of the Pharisees believed in Jesus and the Pharisees continued wanting to arrest Jesus. When Jesus gave sight to the man who was born blind by applying mud with saliva to his eyes and instructing him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, the Pharisees did not see the power of Jesus in bringing forth his healing. The Pharisees looked at the healing place taking place on the Sabbath, and the Jews looked at Jesus as a sinner without the power to bring forth this healing. But this man that received his sight was able to say that Jesus was a godly man who was doing the will of God, and he came to believe in Jesus. Jesus in chapter 9, verses 39 said, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. In order to be able to show and tell, my friends, of Jesus' goodness, and in order to be able to show and tell of God's saving grace, in order to be able to show and tell of how Jesus' power has allowed us to keep taking each step of faith, what are we looking at? Are we seeing but yet still blind and can't see Jesus? Or are we seeing Jesus' power around us? It is amazing. Amen? Are we seeing Jesus' provisions flowing around us? Are we able to proclaim of Jesus' peace that continues to keep us in the never-ending storms and the times of trouble? For it is so easy, my friends, to lose sight of Jesus. When you are hearing that bad news from the doctor and the tests are not looking that favorable and you can't see Jesus' healing power around you, whether you get that medical prognosis you want or not, can we still see God provide the support we may be needing, Sister Virginia, Minister Virginia? Can we still see how the Holy Spirit is bringing forth the much-needed wisdom to know what to ask for? Can we still say that we are seeing how God's power is going to bring us through, regardless of how this illness may end? Or when you are having troubles in your household, mercy God, how do we see God at work when there is more anger, when there is more division, when there is more resentment? Where is God hiding? Where is the love of Jesus going to show up if we are looking at all the wrong, blaming and shaming? Then that what will we see before us? How is God showing up in the midst of all of this grief and strife? In our sermon scripture for today, it may not be totally surprising to find the disciple Thomas. We know from later on in this Gospel of John that he is the one that doubted and needed to see Jesus' hands in his side to believe that he had been risen from the cross, exclaiming that they don't know where Jesus is going, so how can they know the way? And Jesus responds with his sixth saying of the I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is trying to provide the needed assurance that he is going to be with his Father. And, and all can also join Jesus with the Father, but in order to join Jesus with the Father, you must believe in Jesus. One of the Bible commentaries says it somewhat like this, you must believe that Jesus is the way, not a way, but the way. You must accept that Jesus is the truth, not a teaching of the truth, but the truth. And Jesus is the life, not the secrets to living life, but through his resurrection, he is the life. And then as Jesus has been revealing himself all this time and telling them about his connection to God, Philip still says, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. I would assume one could wonder, what have they been seeing all this time? What did they think Jesus was doing and showing them all this time? 
My friends, if someone was to ask you to show and tell how Jesus has moved for you, would you have a story? If someone were asking you, why do you keep going to those prayer meetings every week? What would be your story? I do believe that if we ask those who were baptized today, amen, let's see if I remember, Mia, Dominique, and Micah, yes, um, to show and tell how Jesus has moved in their lives, they would have something to share. Their story may have been different moments of time where Jesus has shown up and they have seen Jesus, they have accepted Jesus, and they have said, I can feel the change on the inside. Now I need it to come out on the outside, and I need to show it on the outside. So let me stand before this congregation, no matter how young or old they were, amen, and they went down into the waters and were a witness for Christ. They told the story of their inward change. They went into those baptismal waters, and that was their show and tell. Is there anyone else out there that needs to tell their story today? My brothers and sisters in Christ, in this gospel according to John, Jesus is telling us that as believers in Christ, we will always see the Father working before us. Jesus and the Father, God, are one. And we have them both working on our behalf. Where Jesus is, the Father is out also. And so in this double power, in this double blessing, we will always have a story to tell. We will always have the opportunity to tell of God's saving grace. We will always be able to share of this renewed mercies each day if you have faith in Jesus. You will be empowered with the Father as well and you will do what Jesus has been doing. You will do even greater things, not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. And not because of what we can do, but because of what God can do through us. Amen? Amen. Amen. My friends, what do you think matters more when we show and tell? Are we believing the person who is doing the showing because of who they are? Maybe because of the number of the letters after their names, their education, and their titles has earned that that makes them credible so that if that person is saying it, then it must be true. It is sad that maybe this is not happening anymore as widely or consistently as it could, but when our grandparents would speak, when our elders would share their faith stories, we would listen. They would share their stories of how Jesus has always made a way. They would share their experience of how God provided that ram in the bush. Are we taking those moments of the show and tell? Are we taking notes to help us facilitate our own show and tell moments? Or are we looking to Google for our solution? Are we trying to scan a QR code? Or are we even relying on chat GPT? I don't even know what that is, honestly, but <laughs> I just keep hearing about it. So it must be something new and fancy. But when we are really on things, relying on things of this world, we're going to get worldly solutions that are temporary. If we are trying to rely on our wisdom, we will always come up short and instead miss out on what God's will had in store for us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I would be remiss if I didn't share the greatest example of another show and tell moment before taking my seat. For in this gospel according to John, Jesus again has been showing himself. He has shown his healing power, he has shown his teaching power, and he's shown his serving power and his ability to show God's love through his actions and his promises. And all this time he has been saying, he has been telling it, I will not be with you for long, for it will soon be my time to leave. My place is not here in this world, but my place is with my Father in the heavens. In a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me. Jesus shared the greatest show and tell moment when Jesus prayed to the Father, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you. 
And as the story goes, with the twisted corn of thorns on his head, clothed in a purple robe, mocked for being the king of Jews, struck down and beaten, they yelled, crucify him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. Jesus was crucified between two thieves, arms stretched out wide, hands nailed to a cross, with his mother near the cross and the other supporting women, Jesus still provided for his mother and told the disciple, here is your mother hung up on a cross, pierced on his side. Jesus said, I am thirsty. And then he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus showed us his love. Jesus showed us his power. Jesus showed us that though they crucified him, he was going to raise up in three days. Just as he had told them, Jesus was our finest example of showing and telling. In this gospel according to John, Jesus continued to tell them of his promises and their charge. You go and tell. He was returning to his father. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me. I am sending you. He breathed the Holy Spirit upon them and charged them to go and tell of God's saving grace. Through our belief in Jesus, my friends, will that be our show and tell moment? Will we be willing to take up the charge of Jesus and speak of his saving grace? Amen. I'm taking my seat, but I will just charge you with that one story. Amen. Show and tell. Amen. God bless you.